Without further ado, then, the adjudication. Unless the prosecution or defense have any other matters to discuss? I don't know. This doesn't feel quite right. Why did Dr. Scythe suddenly admit to it like that? Yeah, why did she? Is everything alright, Mr. Naruto? Like you said before, the way the trial is set to end now. The judge will certainly deliver a verdict of non not guilty. But is that really what we want? Yes! Yes! What the defense should be pushing for now is... What? <laughs> what? Immediate adjudication, please! If the judge gives his verdict now, Professor Hairbrain will be found not guilty without any doubt. Is something troubling you, perhaps? Yes, but it's probably nothing. In the end chamber, during the recess earlier, I did give Mr. Sholmes my word though, didn't I? What? What did I give Mr. Sholmes? I told him I'd pursue any doubts I had about the truth to the absolute lie. <gasps> Come on! <sighs> I think we are very close to the truth. I mean, maybe not 100%, but very close. If you gave Mr. Sholmes your word, then it will certainly is nothing. It's not nothing. Did you read my mind again? Stop doing that, Susato-san! And it means there's only one right answer here. Yes, you're right. The only right answer is immediate adjudication! I don't know why I was ever wavering. Objection! The defense objects to the trial ending at this time, my lord. Oh, I beg your pardon? <laughs> we demand one final testimony. A word? <laughs> you, you do realize I'm about to adjudicate in favor of your client, I presume? <laughs> <laughs> no, the judge also has doubts about my sanity and intelligence. What are you playing at now, my Nipponese friend? Why would you want to abstract the conclusion of the trial at this point? No defense lawyer in his right mind would do that. Exactly. What am I doing? What am I doing? Mr. Naruto, what exactly are you thinking? <laughs> Susato san, you are the one who told me I should not be wavering. The truth, the whole truth, and a way to bring it all out into the open. Right? Yes, in hindsight. Ah yes, one word of warning before I go. If in the course of the trial this afternoon you perceive even a shadow of doubt about the truth, don't let it out of your sight. Pursue it like a dog with a bone. What? I, I think it's all the truth that came out, right? I'm just not sure why Dr. Scythe would, would admit to everything. That's a little bit strange, but I think it's the truth, right? Huh. To the bitter end, you understand? Do not falter whatever may come to pass. Damn you, Sholmes. Damn you. I'm sure Mr. Sholmes knew. He must have deduced that this would happen. No way. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yes, I'm here in court to advocate for my client and to secure an acquittal. Obviously. But that's not all. I believe that I have a duty to the court to pursue the whole truth of the case until every last detail is laid bare. And that is why the defense calls for further testimony from Dr. Saif. Testimony from me? About what? About the nature of your collaboration with Mr. Enoch Drabba. Huh. In case it's escaped your attention, I've already admitted to everything I did. The whole truth has already been revealed. So stop wasting everyone's time. Uh, uh. As his lordship made very plain, your client will get the acquittal you wanted for him. There's simply no point protracting this business further with another tedious cross-examination. Objection! Okay, seems like I've convinced <laughs> Van Zeeks. Pr 
pray forgive my careless handling of that hallowed bottle. I slipped. Right. That's what you call it? Slippage? W what is your objection, Lord Van Zeeks? The prosecution. Also calls for supplementary testimony from the witness. Don't be stupid. If there's more to this case than has yet come to light, then I would join my learned friend in pursuing the facts until the bitter end. You what? Lord Van Zeeks. This is most irregular to say the least. However, as the prosecution also calls for it, I will uphold the request. Dr. Syed, you will testify for the court, explaining the full extent of your involvement in the murder apparently committed by Mr. Drabber. I... very well. Oh, what am I expecting to find here? What else? The waxwork plot. It all began at the scene when I saw the waxwork and a note tucked inside its jacket. The actual body of the victim, as indicated in the note's instructions, was beneath the experimentation stage. The body had to be arranged in certain ways to implicate the defendant, which was my job. I enlisted the help of the entire forensic investigation team to dress the scene appropriately. What? The whole forensic investigation team is complicit in your wrongdoing, in this crime. The truth about the execution ten years ago is a state secret of the highest level. I had to protect it. A state secret. So I was right. The stage and the machine were all specially designed for the deception. So it seems. And all meticulously prepared, you did well to see through it. You are a very shrewd boy. <laughs> so kind of you to say. And what about this autopsy report, then? All I did was record the location of the body as being in the crystal tower instead of under the stage. That's all? That's a terrible corruption. Only my team were aware of the deceit, and then only under my explicit instructions. Nobody else at Scotland Yard knew anything about it, I assure you. Hmm, well, we must be thankful for small mercies, I suppose. Well, I believe that testimony has clarified everything. <laughs> There's no particular need for a cross-examination, I would say. No, I disagree. I can't shake the feeling that something's wrong. Just look at that expression on Dr. Scythe's face. What about it? Maybe it, she always looks like that. It's the defense's right to cross-examine any witness following testimony. What is it about you Japanese that makes you all so doggedly persistent? Do you have... do you also have like previous encounters with Japanese people? Very well, if you so desire, can you proceed please? Yes, my lord. Okay. You saw the waxwork and a note. We know that already. The actual body was beneath the experimentation stage, which we also know. To be arranged in certain ways. What kind of arrangement? Hold it! When you say arranged, I presume you mean with this. Yes, the instructions in the engineer's note said something along the lines of... Fabricate, fabricate some evidence to make it clear that Hairbrain alone could have killed Asman. So... So you mean that was your doing? I fetched Hairbrain's ridiculous screwdriver from the stage and took it with me alone to the abyss under the stage where the birdcage had fallen. Alone, Doctor? I didn't feel it would be appropriate to involve anybody else in that particular part of the deception. There was a void under the stage where I found a birdcage lying in the dirt. 
Whoa, is this a new kind of music? It's ominous. I approached it, leaned down, and slowly opened it up. Then I took the screwdriver in both hands and plunged it into the man's chest. The autopsy report is from Dr. Scythe as well, so this might be forged as well, right? Hemorrhage of a wound to the chest that pierced the heart. And then you noted that in your fake autopsy report is a fictitious cause of death. Yeah, it is a fake, fake one, because um, Esmond died from fall and not from the wound to the chest. Hmm. Exactly. So, the actual cause of death was... The trauma resulting from the 30-foot drop. My word! What is it, Mr. Sato? Something about Dr. Scythe's last statement is playing on my mind, that's all. What? Yes, mind too. Not mine, though! What? Broken vertebrae? Um, there's blood. Would there have been blood? When did she plunge the thing into his chest? After the incident. But time of death is around 2.20 p.m. Okay, this might be forged as well, but let's say this is true. Mm. I just don't know when, when does blood stop flowing <laughs> out of the body after a person's death like this. I just don't know. We don't have that kind of information. Dr. Scythe. There's really no need to shout. I can hear you perfectly well. The defense calls for you to add what you just said to your formal testimony. Oh? Which part? What I want her to supplement her testimony with is... The real cause of death? I mean, it's the same, right? What she did to the victim? Oh, what she did to the victim is not the real cause of death. <gasps> what she did to the victim? Wait. The real cause of death. How is this significant? A broken vertebra? Maybe supplement it with... What you did to the victim. Or the real cause of death? What you did to the victim? How you stabbed Mr. Asman in the chest, that part. Fine, if that's what you want. But there's really no need to point. The prosecution concurs. <laughs> <laughs> Very well, you will supplement your testimony now, witness. If you wish, my lord. I stood over the victim's corpse where it lay in the toppled cage and plunged the screwdriver into the chest. Is this wrong? Somehow?
Hmm. We need to press again, right? When did you do that? So it was you who stabbed Miss Asman with this. Yes, far easier than this section, I assure you. No precision required. Oh, what a welcome change. The victim died instantly from a snapped neck. Wait, what? All I did was carry out the instructions I'd been given. As unflinchingly as ever, no doubt. I imagine you didn't bat an eyelid when you drove the weapon into his body. <sighs> there was no need to bat my eyelids. And what else did you do to twist the facts? Remind the court, why don't you? If you wish. Hmm, no new information. You enlisted the help of the entire team. Hold it! The entire team in perverting the course of justice. My team consists of the very best investigators there are. I demand loyalty from all members. We operate on a code of chivalry of sorts. You aid and abet a murderer, commit perjury and dare to talk of chivalry. It was a matter of priorities. What? Nothing was more important than protecting the secret of the professor. My team did what was necessary without losing sight of the primary goal. I consider their conduct exemplary. Ugh. Don't concede the point, Mr. Narodo. You mustn't let her win. I need a lawyer. I'll take that silence as tacit acceptance. Now, can we move on? Tested acceptance. State secrets. Oops. So that's her story. She's admitted everything and revealed her full involvement in the crime. I do wonder if there could really be much more to it. Well, I don't know, but I just have a feeling. Do you, Mr. Nanohodo? The truth is, I find it strange too. How those two are reacting to this in completely opposite ways, I mean. Yes, exactly. For some reason I feel sure they're still trying to hide something. to press on this statement. State secret. It! But at what cost? Faith in Scotland Yard is going to suffer a terrible blow as a result of this. And your precious secret is out now anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yes, as you say. And I take full responsibility. Blimey, no, Dr. Scheider! Surely there was some other way you could have protected the secret? No, there really wasn't. I've done my utmost, believe me. In many ways, I respect your determination. Ew, I nearly froze under that cold stare as she said that. I do believe she was being genuine though, Mr. Naruto. Okay. Okay, now I wonder if I should have asked her to put her other statement into her testimony. Let's try that real quick. Hold it! And why can I not skip it? I already read this. <clears throat> The music did not change this time. And plunge it into his chest. And 
It was simply a matter of recording the stab wound as the cause of death. Yes. <clears throat> hmm. You know, if you think it would be appropriate, I'm sure you could ask Dr. Sai to change the supplementary testimony she gave before. Hmm. Change it? Dr. Scythe, what you said before about a real cause of death, I believe that may be significant, so could you change your supplementary statement? Very well. The actual cause of death was the neck trauma as men suffered from the 30-foot fall. <laughs> I don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, let's press on this. Hold it! You're quite sure of that? It was a result of a broken neck? Yes, as a professional, that was more than apparent. You'd never know just by looking at the photograph of the victim, though, would you? No, that's very true. Obviously not. Which is precisely why coroners are needed to determine the actual facts. Yes, assuming they can be trusted. Ouch. <laughs> She's not flinching. There's no point calling her assessment into question without evidence. Let's get back to the testimony. Very well. Hmm, I cannot present anything. Oh, should I have presented this photograph because of the blood? I think we can maybe we can present it right here. Can we? Objection. Surely something about that last statement seems odd, doesn't it? <laughs> would you care more more precisely would you find odd? Oh on your return journey to Japan? Holy crap, Judge! I wouldn't be back to give the court an answer for about four months though. Holy crap. <gasps> mm, do I have to change the statement? Say the actual body was beneath the experimentation Hold stage. It! So you knew about the special construction of the stage used to carry out a trick then? It was quite obvious what had happened with the, with the victim and the waxwork. And you switched the two over, didn't you? In other words, you recorded the victim's body as have been discovered in the crystal tower and the waxwork. I wrapped it and sent it by carriage to the specified address at a specified time. And why were you given such directions? Presumably, so it could be recovered by Drabba and returned to Madame de Spells. I see, and then you put a birdcage bag on the experimentation stage? Yes, although someone obviously made a mistake about which cage should go where. I thought I'd made it perfectly clear to the team, but still. I suppose you were focused on a victim's body, that being a more important detail. From what you described before, it sounds like the note was anonymous. Did you have any idea of who was behind it? There are very few people I know about what really happened ten years ago to start with. But anyway, I'd never heard of this engineer. So no, I had no idea. Yet despite not knowing who was behind the plan, you went along with it. I had no choice. Protecting the professor's secret was my only concern. But a horse has bolted now, and the stable door will never shut again. 
Scotland Yard's reputation will be immeasurably damaged as a result of all of this. <sighs> yes, thank you, Lord Van Zeeks. I'm well aware of that. So, as I understand it, uh, what you found in the birdcage was the waxwork model. Where then was the victim's body? So this is the cage that fell down from the stage and there's another cage that fell down onto the crystal tower. Hmm. Can you change your statement again? Hi. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Yes, yes. And lean down over the birdcage and opened it up. Hold on. He looks exactly like this. <laughs> it looks a little bit wrong. The straps are too wide. And then I took the screwdriver. Change it, please. Dr. Scythe, what you said before about what you did to the victim's body, I believe that may be significant, so could you please change it? Very well. You stood over the victim's corpse, where it lay in a toppled cage, and plunged a screwdriver into the chest. Don't see any contradictions here, to be honest. I mean, clearly he was stabbed while he was inside the cage because you can see blood on the straps. It's not like he was stabbed anywhere, somewhere else and then put it here. Someone put it here. No. Objection. Oh. Why is that a contradiction? I don't get it. I've got a nasty feeling that this inconsistency points to an extremely uncomfortable truth. What on earth is the matter, Council? Have you lost your tongue? I apologize, my lord. Dr. Scythe, in that last statement of yours, there's just one point. That seems to defy explanation. <sighs> Out with it, my learned friend. There's an obvious inconsistency between your description and this photograph. Which shows the victim in the birdcage following the events that led to his death. Oh, but... Yeah, they put the body in the wrong birdcage, right? Or something. Who took the photograph? I don't know. Objection! The court has already examined that photograph in depth. There's nothing new we can learn from it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm, this is the... Wait, 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 wait. Okay. There are two cages, right? One is on the stage and one is found on the tower. And what Scythe said, she went underneath the stage and plunged the screwdriver into the body here. So blood should be on the bird cage that was on that that is damaged on the bottom, right? This birdcage here has a damaged top. This one has a damaged bottom. Mm -hmm. And uh, and 
and and what now? So if she what she, if what she says is true, then this bird cage must be the stage bird cage where it was where it is damaged at the bottom, right? Because she stabbed him at the st in, uh, underneath the stage, right? Because of this blood splatter, you see. Hmm. But then what? Is is this birdcage somehow the, the the crystal tower birdcage? I can't see any evidence about that. Maybe the glass. Hmm. Objection! Yes, we have already considered it. That's true. But we now know the facts to be different. What do you mean? I believe we should let the defense explain. Where in this photograph would we see the alleged inconsistency with the witness's statement? Uh, like here? Or, or here? Huh? Okay, hold on. Where was this taken? A photographic print of the victim taken after he had ostensibly be beamed to the crystal tower. It shows an apparent step wound to the chest. Hmm. So here... I, I don't see any evidence that this birdcage is a crystal tower birdcage. I mean, whoever took this photo might have just taken the birdcage, the, the stage birdcage, to the tower. Okay, that doesn't make any sense, right? Take that! Look closely at the blood stain on the victim's chest. It clearly extends in a downwards direction towards the man's feet. Oh, okay, gravity. Uh, what? And why is there significant cause? If the victim, well, if the victim was stabbed moments before the kinesis machine was set in motion, that's entirely ex expected. But it wasn't. He was stabbed afterwards. Oh, of course, no, that's not what happened. Exactly, my lord. Dr. Scythe made it very clear in her testimony just now that the point at which she stole Professor Hairbrain's screwdriver and stabbed the victim was after the grand deception was set in motion when the birdcage had fallen below the stage out of sight. From the shape of it, it's clear that the birdcage would have fallen on its side after the 30-foot drop. What? Fallen on its side? And if the victim had really been stabbed whilst inside the birdcage in that position, the blood from the wound would have spread out equally in all directions. Okay, for it to have formed the long longitudinal appearance we see in the picture, it's inconceivable. Okay, so you're saying, I'm saying that he was stabbed while being upright. Is that it? <sighs> Given that the victim's blood seeped vertically downwards from the wound, it must be the case that when you stabbed Mr. Asman, he was standing up. In short, Dr. Scythe, your latest testimony was a total fabrication. I knew it, I was right. Now I've identified that contradiction. There's only one way to explain the facts. We've all been under a great misapprehension here. What? What sort of misapprehension? Dr. Scythe. 
You claim you were coerced into helping Mr. Drebber as a result of the note he left in the waxwork. You claim that you made changes to the scene of the crime to implicate the defendant. And you claim that you authored a fake autopsy report to cover your tracks. But one of those claims is an out and out lie. Wait, <laughs> wait, what? Uh, you were coerced? You made changes? Fake autopsy report. One of them is a lie? Because the question of what the bloodstain really tells us has only one possible answer. If that is the case, what is it, man? <laughs> you called me man instead of my learned friend. Cause you've clearly struck upon a revelation or told the court what it is. Which part of Dr. Side's story is shown to be a lie by the contradiction in her testimony? Uh, the stabbing of the victim? The answer is very simple if you consider the sequence of events. If, when the victim was stabbed, the blood from the wound seeped downwards as it did, we can be sure that the victim must have been either sitting or standing upright at the time. But as you rightly pointed out, the birdcage would have fallen on its side when it fell beneath the stage. Yes, it would, which tells us that the victim must have been in that position of his own accord. What, what? Objection! What? That's impossible. The man was dead, remember? No. That is the misapprehension. When the birdcage fell from the stage into the void below, it must have hit the ground with considerable force. But Mr. Asman didn't die in the fall. Did he know about the trick? He probably lost consciousness for a while, but when he came round, he got to his feet to climb out of the cage. Just as Dr. Scythe appeared. What? That doesn't make any sense. If the victim was in fact alive at that point in time, it changes everything. Uh. Uh. Mr. Odie Asman's killer wasn't the defendant, Professor Albert Herbring, nor was it the mastermind behind the stage trickery, Mr. Enoch Drabber. It was you, Dr. Courtney Scythe. Hold on. But if he climbed out of the cage and then Dr. Scythe stabbed him, then why would there be blood on the straps? That doesn't make any sense. Does it? Huh. Uh. Uh. Order, 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 C -c could this possibly be true? Have you been taking me for a fool? It was you, was it? You killed him? What, Drabba? Why are you... <laughs> what, you plan to kill him? Why is he so angry? You hope that by admitting to being an, an accomplice in Mr. Drebber's scheme, the trial would end, before you were accused of a far worse crime. Cold-blooded murder. Well, I mean, even if the trial of Professor Hairbrain ha has ended, uh, she can still be accused of the crime, right? If, if Van Ziegs would do the right thing for once. Oh, do shut up. You're so desperate now, you're making all this up. As if I ever do something like that. Objection! I assure you, the defense is not desperate, Doctor. Mr. Narodo has established the facts using evidence and logic, and logic alone. Ha! <laughs> logic? Don't make me laugh. Sadly, your logic has a gaping hole in it. 
What? What do you mean? Tch, I'd have thought it was obvious. A motive, boy. You're lacking a motive. What possible reason would I have to kill Mr. Asman? Asma was involved in any number of criminal activities, from coercion to theft to murder. But there's no known connection to Dr. Scythe here. Uh. Uh, I'm rather relieved to say it does seem somewhat far-fetched. True, there's no obvious motive, but there's still something in the back of my mind. I feel sure I've seen something somewhere that hints at why the coroner might have done this. Yes, I might have tampered with the crime scene and concocted a fake report. But murdering someone for no reason is a very different story. Objection. Now, when you questioned what possible reason you could have for wanting to kill Mr. Asman, something did come to mind. Really? What? What? One was his cousin and an acquitted once. Ah. Yes, we saw it yesterday, didn't we? Something that seemed strange, but we had no reason to suspect it at the time. There's a particular object that explains why Dr. Scythe would have wanted to kill Mr. Asman. Huh? What? The iron mask scalpels? The screwdriver? What? And what happened yesterday? I completely forgot. I don't get it. The iron mask? Makes the most sense. <laughs> but I don't know why. Uh, it's the iron mask. You've lost me. Me too. Huh? Uh, sorry, Mr. Narahodo, but why the iron mask? Well, of all the things I saw yesterday, it left the greatest impression, so... <sighs> Clearly you have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, I think I must have said the wrong thing. <laughs> Forgive the interruption, Dr. Scythe, but what my colleague meant to say was scalpels. Perhaps that makes a little more sense to you. <laughs> Holy crap, Susato san <laughs> She calmly just corrects me. Ah, of course. Uh, did you say scalpels? What did happen yesterday? I... I forgot. Uh. It would appear that Ward has struck a chord, Doctor. You... come on out with it. It was yesterday, when we visited your laboratory. Look at this big thick book here. Oh! Ah, it appears to be an accounting ledger. It's a record of the forensic investigation team spending, I think. Oh? What is it? It's clear that the team purchases various equipment on a monthly basis, but... Well, one entry seems rather strange. Really? In what way? They're buying 500 scalpels every month. That's really weird. Yeah. 500 scopes a month? At first, I wondered what on earth you could be using that many scalpels for. But actually, I realize now it's not the scalpels themselves that are significant. It's the money for them, disappearing every month from the department's accounts. Yet, yeah, duh! <laughs> the yeah, of course. Asman's criminal organization relied heavily on extortion for its funding. Oh! Tracing the money from the forensic investigation team's account to find out where it was going would be extremely straightforward. So Asman was extorting them. Uh, uh. Ten years ago, when Mr. Asman was still a journalist and wrote this article about Mr. Drebber, 
He may well have stumbled upon information as he was researching the story. Information relating to Dr. Scythe's darkest secrets that he would use to wreck money from her for the next decade. Her darkest secret? Good lord, you mean? I don't know what happened on the night of that execution ten years ago, but clearly the opportunity to rid yourself of that menace was too tempting to pass up. So in the end, you weren't coerced at all, were you? You did it entirely of your own free will. You stabbed Mr. Esmond in the heart with all your might. To silence the blackmailer who knew your dark secret forever.